Thank you very much and good morning everyone and thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we, we come for you today to talk about violent extremism and acts of terrorism which have no place in a Canadian society or abroad. We know that ideologically motivated violent extremism or IMVE is of increasing concern both domestically and among our allies and partners. We have seen too recently the brutal killing of Muslim, a Muslim family in London, Ontario. And we have also seen acts of anti-Asian, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, misogynist, acts of hatred occurring on Canadian soil. And sadly, there are many examples, to, far too many examples to point to. In Canada, our public safety and national security officials use a full suite of measures to protect our country and to keep Canadians safe from any threat, including the threat posed by terrorism and ideologically motivated violent extremism. These measures can include surveillance, investigations, intelligence gathering, lawful information sharing, and ongoing threat assessments. It can also include, for example, the no-fly list and the criminal code listing of terrorist entities. The Government of Canada's criminal code terrorist listing regime is an important tool for countering terrorism in Canada and globally, and it's part of the government's commitment to keep Canadians safe. The criminal code's very explicit in the criteria that must be met when listing an entity. Designating an entity is a rigorous process based on evidence and the law. And one constant imperative is to ensure that actions by the government respect the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The listing of terrorist entities assists Canadian law enforcement agencies by helping to facilitate the laying of terrorist charges against perpetrators and supporters of terrorism. And it plays a key role in countering terrorist financing. Listings can also help thwart the efforts from sympathizers in Canada by criminalizing certain support activities, including those related to travel, and recruitment. You will recall that back in February, with the 13 new entities were added to the list in, 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 of, of terrorist entities in Canada. And at that time, I indicated that the security and intelligence community would continue to monitor and collect information on other IMVE entities with the goal of determining whether they met the legal threshold for listing. In order to be listed, there needs to be reasonable grounds to believe that an entity has knowingly carried out attempted to carry out or participated or facilitated a terrorist activity, or that an entity has knowingly acted on behalf of the or at the direction or in association with an entity involved in terrorist activity. The definition of terrorist activity also includes a conspiracy or an attempt or a threat to commit any such conduct or counseling in relation to such conduct. And when we list terrorist entities under the criminal code, I believe we send a very strong message that Canada will not tolerate this type of action in, in our country. And we signal that we are prepared to do everything in our power to counter ongoing threats to Canada's national security and to its citizens. Today, we are announcing the addition of four new entities, three groups and one individual to the list of terrorist entities under the criminal code. Being added today are two ideologically motivated violent extremist groups, the Three Percenters and the Aryan Strike Force. The Three Percenters are a decentralized entity within the broader anti-government militia movements in the United States. They have been linked to bomb plots targeting the U.S. federal government building and the Muslim community. For example, in November of 2015, a Three Percenter was arrested and eventually convicted of shooting and wounding five men at a Black Lives Matter demonstration in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in 2020, two of the group's leaders directed a plot to, uh, to allegedly kidnap the governor of, of Michigan, involving the acquiring and detonating of explosives to divert police attention from the kidnapping. The second group, the Aryan Strike Force, is a white nationalist organization that supports using violence as a necessary tool to achieve its goals. Also being added to the list is an American neo-Nazi, an individual by the name of James Mason, whose instructions on tactics and counseling of terrorist activities have been strongly influential in a number of the listed groups. His writings have served as the ideological grounding for the neo-Nazi groups, such as the Adam Waffen Division, which was listed as a terrorist entity in Canada. Mr. Mason has also provided tactical direction on how to operate a terrorist group and has coached others on murder and genocide. And finally, the fourth group that we are listing today is the Islamic State of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The ISDRC has been responsible for attacks in eastern DRC against civilians and military targets. They are, were created by ISIL in 2019, and they have, represent a significant threat to Canadian interests in that region of the world. With these additions, there are now 77 terrorist entities listed under the criminal code. And this marks only the second time an individual has been added to the list. And to be very clear, 
Listing an individual has exactly the same enforcement value as listing a group, as an investigative opportunities and criminal consequences would then apply to his, his supporters and to his affiliates. Whether an individual or group, in, in, in order to be listed, explicit criteria must be met. Based on their actions, each entity meets the legal threshold for listing as set out in the criminal code and as verified by independent counsel at the Department of Justice. And to be clear, I believe these listings are a significant measure for the government. They can help support criminal investigations. They can help facilitate the laying of terrorist-related charges against associates and supporters of the list. When an entity is placed on the list, banks and financial institutions can freeze their property, which helps block the flow of financial resources to terrorist groups if they attempt to use Canada's financial systems. Listings can also help thwart efforts from sympathizers in Canada by criminalizing certain support activities, including those related to terrorist travel, training, and recruitment. And it can also serve as a clear indicator to social media companies that an entity's online content should be removed. A listing can support the denial or revocation of a Canadian organization's charitable status and can have implications for a person's admissibility into Canada if they have connections to the listed entities. Canada's national security and law enforcement agencies continually monitor the activities of terrorist groups that threaten Canada and the safety of Canadians. It is important to note that this is only a step that we are taking just yesterday. To, uh, and, and this is important to note that this, is, only, this is, the, is not the only step we're taking. And in fact, just yesterday, we announced our plan to combat online hate. That plan will help to create a safer online environment that protects Canadians from hate speech and hate crimes, while continuing to protect the freedom of expression in Canada. We will continue to use every tool at our disposal to protect our country and our interests and to keep Canadians safe here, at home, and around the world. Thank you very much. Oui, bonjour et uh, merci à tous. Merci à tous de, de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. Euh, mon nom est Joël Lightbound, je suis secrétaire parlementaire du ministre Blair. Et euh, aujourd'hui, on souhaite vous parler d'extrémisme violent et d'actes terroristes qui n'ont certainement pas leur place dans notre société, ni au Canada, ni à l'étranger. On annonce aujourd'hui l'ajout de quatre nouvelles entités, trois groupes et un individu, à la liste des entités terroristes selon le Code criminel. Les quatre entités sont les suivantes. Deux groupes d'extrémistes violents à motivation idéologique, les Three Percenters et le Aryan Strike Force. On annonce aussi l'ajout de James Mason, un néo-nazi américain dont les instructions sur les tactiques et les conseils sur les activités terroristes ont influencé un certain nombre de groupes figurant sur la liste des entités terroristes. On annonce aussi l'ajout d'un groupe affilié à Daesh, l'État islamique, République démocratique du Congo. Ces ajouts portent à 77 le nombre d'entités terroristes inscrites à la liste selon le Code criminel. Ce n'est que la deuxième fois aujourd'hui qu'un individu est ajouté à la liste. Mais il faut préciser que l'inscription d'un individu a la même valeur d'application de la loi que l'inscription d'un groupe. En effet, les possibilités d'enquête et les conséquences criminelles s'appliquent ainsi à ses partisans et à ses groupes affiliés. Qu'il s'agisse d'un individu ou d'un groupe, l'inscription à la liste repose sur des critères très explicites. Selon ces actions, chaque entité doit atteindre le seuil légal pour l'inscription tel qu'il est énoncé dans le Code criminel et tel que vérifié également par un avocat indépendant du ministère de la Justice. Il faut préciser que ces inscriptions constituent une mesure importante pour le gouvernement, pour le gouvernement en effet parce qu'elles permettent de faciliter les enquêtes criminelles. Elles peuvent aussi contribuer au dépôt d'accusations liées au terrorisme contre des associés et des partisans d'entités inscrites. Une pareille inscription d'une entité sur la liste entraîne le gel des actifs dans la banque, dans les banques, dans les institutions financières, ce qui aide à bloquer le flux de ressources financières des groupes terroristes en cas de tentative d'utiliser le système financier canadien. L'inscription aide également à contrecarrer les efforts des sympathisants au Canada en criminalisant certaines activités de soutien, notamment celles qui sont liées au déplacement, à l'entraînement ou au recrutement de terroristes. Elle constitue en outre une indication claire pour les entreprises de médias sociaux que le contenu en ligne d'une entité listée doit être supprimé. L'inscription peut étayer le refus ou la révocation du statut d'organisme de bienfaisance d'un organisme canadien et peut avoir des répercussions sur l'admissibilité d'une personne au Canada si elle a des liens avec des entités terroristes inscrites. Les organismes canadiens de sécurité nationale et d'application de la loi surveillent continuellement les activités des groupes terroristes qui menacent le Canada et la sécurité des Canadiens. Et on va continuer d'utiliser tous les outils dont on dispose pour protéger notre pays et nos intérêts et pour assurer la sécurité des Canadiens ici comme ailleurs dans le monde. Merci. 
Merci beaucoup, secrétaire parlementaire Ladbound. We will now open the floor to questions. Nous passerons maintenant à la période de questions. To give everyone a chance to participate, please limit yourself to one question and one follow-up, uh, and begin by uh, identifying yourself and the name of the media outlet you represent. Donc, afin de donner euh, la chance à tout le monde de participer, veuillez vous limiter à une question et un suivi. Et euh, nous vous demandons de commencer par vous identifiant et euh, le nom de l'organisme que vous représentez également. Opérateur, on peut passer à la première question. Merci. Thank you. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur l'étoile un maintenant pour poser une question. Et la première question, the first question, is from Glenn McGregor from CTV National News. Your line is open. Uh, thank you, Minister, for taking our questions. I want to ask you about the burning of two churches in the Okanagan uh, that the RCMP considers suspicious uh, and given its proximity to the Kamloops residential school site, There's speculation that this could be some form of response to what we've learned recently. Is your department uh, tracking the possibility that there could be um, more uh, or at least some violent reaction to, to what we're learning about Kamloops, the residential school in Saskatchewan? Um, is this something that's, that's on your radar? And, and if so, uh, what are you doing about it? Yeah. Thanks very much, Glenn. And, and quite frankly, violence is unacceptable anywhere in Canada, and the destruction of, of the two churches um, is, is under active investigation. And although I, I can't comment on, on the specifics of an investigation, um, I can tell you that, that you know, we, we are monitoring very carefully, you know, The, the violent activities that have taken place, and you know, we we understand that that you know that 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 may be motivated by a number of things, and I and I am not going to speculate on 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 the motive for for that offenses, but um, the I, I want to assure you that the RCMP certainly are are very open minded, and and will take a very objective look at all aspects of that crime and any other crime and in, in that that takes place in their their jurisdiction of responsibility, uh, and and if there are elements of 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 hate. That, that are, are uh, material to, to that investigation, I'm, I'm confident it will be followed up. Hello? Mr. McGregor, any follow-up? Okay, operator, we'll move to the second question. Operator, are you still with us? The next question is from uh, Chris Reynolds, the Canadian Press. Your line is open. Hi, Minister. Thanks very much for taking our questions. Um, I understand that in order to uh, meet the threshold to join this list, when uh, a group or an individual does not have to be active in Canada, but I am wondering to what extent uh, you understand the three percenters, for example, to be active in Canada and in what capacity exactly? Yeah, thank, thank you very much. And and I, although I'm, I'm, I can't sort of reveal all of the evidence and, and intelligence that we relied upon, um, uh, there, there is ample reason to believe that the three percenters are active, both in the United States and air, uh, their adherents are also active in Canada. Um, we 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 monitor their their activities in Canada and uh, with 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 growing concern and um, they are present in the country and similarly uh, the Aryan Strike Force also has chapters in in the United States but also in Eastern Europe South A South America South Africa and in Canada and and so on unfortunately and, and I say this with with Um, with concern that that the, both of those entities are are active in Canada as well as in the United States and other places. I see. Right. Um, to what extent also have we seen any evidence of these groups' infiltration into the Canadian military or or law enforcement circles? Yeah. Well, this is something again, without getting into specifics. Um, both groups have 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 uh, publicized their interest in recruiting within law enforcement, um, former law enforcement, and and military people with military training. 
And and so that is one of their stated goals and purposes, and 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 clearly one of the tactics that they employ. And and so it is it is a concern. And and I know that the Canadian Armed Forces, um, and and our law enforcement agencies uh, are are aware of of this concern. It's one of the things I think that is valuable. Uh, Chris, in, in, in the listing of these entities to clearly identify them for what they are, which is terrorist entities. And 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 when we, we affix that label to them, and again, again, that's that's based on evidence, intelligence, and the law. There's a very strict pri- criteria for the listing of these entities. But when we do that, I think we send a very si- clear signal to to you know employers and and in, in law enforcement, in in the armed forces and everywhere in Canada. Um, the true nature of of the activities that these uh, organizations uh, are are part of. Um, Clearly, we've seen their, you know, both the the, uh, Aryan Strike Force and the Three Percenters um, have indicated their interest in recruiting uh, among our law enforcement and and, and military agencies, and they do attract some adherents who are former law enforcement and and, and former military. And and that's a matter of concern, and and I'm sure of of action uh, by both law enforcement and the military in Canada. Thank you very much. I will proceed to the next question. Thank you. The next question, la question suivante, is from Alex Boutillier, Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Good morning, Minister. Um, just following up on uh, my colleague's question there, uh, I know the military has been active in both putting putting in, in place new orders, but also investigating the extent to which far-right white supremacist groups have already infiltrated the ranks. Are you aware of any similar uh, process either within federal policing with the RCMP or within local law enforcement? Do you have any sense of the scope of that problem? If not, um, are you interested in in sort of measuring that in order to address the problem? Uh, thanks very much, Alex. And, and and it is a concern that these groups would, would seek to recruit from within those with law enforcement experience or even actively in, involved in law enforcement. Um, I, I have had discussions with the commissioner of the RCMP. It's a concern that she's she's very aware of and is, is taking action within her own organization. And I've also discussed this with the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, and, and which is the police chiefs from right across the country. Um, you know, th- they are, you know, very much uh, concerned with maintaining the integrity of, of their institutions and maintaining the public trucks. And, and I will tell you that there's absolutely no place for racism and intolerance in the actions of these types of groups in law enforcement or in the Canadian military in this country. And 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 I have great confidence that the overwhelming majority of, of, of those in law enforcement and the Canadian military reject this type of ideology. But unfortunately, there we know that there are some that may be attracted to it, and, and that is a, a, a concern. And I, I think the source of, of action on, on both in law enforcement and in the Canadian military to make sure that we we scrub the hatred from from the, from the ranks. It has no place, uh, certainly in policing or in the Canadian military. And uh, you mentioned that you listed several far right white supremacist groups in uh, February. Can you point to any concrete effect that that listing has had, either on their their operations? Um, you know, specific to those groups or the operations of, you know, white supremacy and white supremacist movement in Canada generally. Yeah, well, well, I would, I would, I would point to to one effect, which which is still being sort of worked on, and they haven't gone away. But we listed the Proud Boys, for example, which had a number of chapters across Canada um, back in February, and when what we saw is. Is, is it it had an almost immediate chilling effect on that organization uh, they just dis, they disbanded officially they were removed from a number of social media platforms I believe it also had a very significant impact on their ability to raise funds and and to recruit um, with with within the uh, with within the country and 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 even in other places around the world Canada was the first obviously country to to list the proud boys as a terrorist entity but um, I can tell you particularly working with very closely with our five eyes partners there's, there's a great interest in the action that we have taken, and I know that there is, you know, a growing alignment and concern. 
I believe that ideologically motivated violent extremism is the greatest threat to our domestic security. And 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 although the, the listing of terrorist entities is an important action, it's not the only thing that that we are doing, Alex. And 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 I think it's important to to be able to to assure Canadians that you know there's a great deal of of, of work that that's going on with international uh, security and investigations and institutions at, at CSIS and at CSC. Um, the, the the work of our law enforcement, particularly, is led by the the the, the the RCMP in, in the criminal code. We we also have a number of other important tools available to deal with these organizations. Um, in addition to those investigations, including the A10 peace bonds that can be brought against individuals, um, the, we we have the, the provisions of the um, Secure Air Travel Act, the SADA as, it, as it's sometimes known. Um, I have the authority under the Canadian passport to restrict the travel of these individuals, um, and as well the, the important work of the Canada Centre on counter, countering radicalization to violence. There are a number of very very significant uh, efforts underway to counter the threat that ideologically motivated violent extremism represents in this country. And one of the important tools we have available to us is the listing process. I believe it does have a chilling effect on these organizations as well. It it makes it difficult for them to to recruit and to finance. Uh, the removal of of their presence on on social media platforms is facilitated by this, and it, it also creates a number of it, it, it being listed in in and of itself is not a criminal charge, but it can facilitate other criminal investigations and other criminal charges for people who engage in acts in support of these listed entities. And so um, I, I believe it, 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 it's one of the effective tools that we, we have available to us, and we have already seen it having what I believe to be a positive effect, a chilling effect on, on the actions and activities of, of, of the named organizations. Once again, please press star one. On your telephone keypad, if you have a question, de nouveau, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour toute question. And the next question, the question suivante, is from Evan Dyer, CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm wondering about uh, a group that isn't listed. Um, there's been a lot of pressure over this group over the years. It's the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran. Uh, I know that it is affiliated with a national government. Uh, we do list Hezbollah, however, which is part of the government of Lebanon. Um, so I'm just wondering, given the events of PS752 this year, why IRGC, uh, again, is not on the listing? Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Evan. And, and, and it's an important question. And, and, and can I simply simply advise you that the criminal code regime for the listing of, of terrorist entities does not really facilitate us listing um, a, a government or, or the, the, uh, the armed forces of a government. There are other tools available to us, and we are using those other tools. Um, but with respect to, to the listing of the IRGC, what we have done is we've listed four of their proxy um, agencies, and in particular the the Quds Force of the IRGC, which which is a, 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 a proxy for the IRGC, um, engaged in 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 terrorist activities, and so we have listed them in this country. You know this is this issue arose in, in a number of times in the past. I, mean, I, I recall even in a previous government, the the uh, the Global Affairs Minister acknowledged that at that time, uh, the, Mr. Baird acknowledged that that the law did not allow for the listing of the IRGC, but there are are some other very important things we can and have done. Uh, certainly, the, the listing of them as a state supporter of terrorism. There are a number of economic uh, sanctions that we are also engaged in uh, with respect to that regime. Those are the tools appropriate to use um, uh, against the um, uh, against a, a regime that is engaged in odious activities as it relates to state sponsoring of, of terrorism. Um, but at the same at the same time, which it's, it's important to use the tools within uh, the 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 authority that that exists within them, and we've used the the terrorist entity, as I've said, to 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 list those entities which qualify under the criminal code. Uh, regulations and there are other tools that are available to us and being used um, very effectively by our Global Affairs Canada um, in order to to address, you know, I think very legitimate concerns about the actions of of the state of Iran, um, and 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 I, I you know I I think as well the report that did, that just came out with respect to PS seven five two I I think it clearly demonstrates um, that and the 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 kind of the responsibility of 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 the, the Iranian regime for for what took place and and it is of of significant concern to us and we will use the appropriate tools available to us uh, to respond to that. 
Thanks. And if I have, may I ask a follow up? The um, you mentioned that the uh, three percenters and Aryan Strike Force both have chapters in Canada. Could you give us a bit of a clearer picture of just how many individuals we're talking about in these two groups? How many chapters they're divided into, and geographically, um, where they're where they're concentrated, and also if they are involved in any actual activities that go beyond just organizing. Uh, what kind of things do you think they can? Have? It's important to understand sort of what what the motivation of these groups is. And for example, the Aryan Strike Force, for their stated goal is to start a race war, and 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 to eradicate ethnic minorities. And and they do have chapters here in Canada. Um, the the three percenters. We know that there are chapters. Um, I don't want to be be too specific because, quite frankly, I'm I'm low to pr promote them in any way. We've listed them because we want them to cease their activities in this country, and, and we want to give law enforcement and our national security intelligence agencies the tools to deal more effectively with them. But, but for example, there is one chapter that I'm aware of in Canada that they're on their Facebook page, they have 3,000 members. Uh, we believe that their, their active membership is probably somewhat less than that, but, but they do exist here in Canada and, and in more than one province. There, there are chapters of the three percenters. Um, they have clearly planned acts of violence and, and, and I think Islamophobic um, uh, hatred is is one of and Islamophobic uh, violence is one of the things that uh, they they have ta ta uh, targeted and and other racial minorities and so you know they do exist in this country their activities um, are easily meet the threshold of terrorism um, and 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 that's why we've listed them and 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 they do exist here and 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 even and by the way I, I want to be also clear of and even when groups that we've previously listed such as the proud boys you know have a press conference and announce that they are disbanding it doesn't mean that um, the, their ideology is 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 suddenly gone away or that the activities of members of that group are no longer of a concern to law enforcement or or our, our national security intelligence agencies, and so we continue to, to to follow up and to to do everything possible to counter the activities of these groups. The ones that we've added today is 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 are I think um, uh, also represent a significant threat to the to the domestic security of this country. And so I, I want to assure Canadians that we will remain vigilant. And 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 there are other groups. Let me be very clear: there are a number of other groups that are deeply concerning to us in their activities. And so the gathering of evidence and intelligence and its application under the law will continue to be monitored carefully by us. And as that evidence and intelligence supports additional listings, we'll bring them forward. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, operator, we have the time for one last question. Um, we can proceed. Thank you. La dernière question, the last question, will be from Alex Boutelier from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Thanks, Minister. I'm just wondering if you could comment on the <clears throat> attack of two Muslim women in Edmonton, um, I believe, yesterday. Um, obviously, following on the heels of, of London, um, a lot of Muslim Canadians are very concerned about their safety, you know, about their visibility in public and whether or not they're safe to, to you know, participate in Canadian society. So I'm just wondering if, if you could comment a little bit on that and, um, and what measures, if any, you're taking in response to these, these attacks. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. And you know, the attacks that have taken again, uh, t been taken over the past several weeks and 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 months against the Muslim community, women who've been attacked for simply wearing the hijab. You know, a Canadian family, you know, out for a walk on a Sunday evening, um, uh, being attacked and murdered uh, by an individual clearly motivated by hatred, and 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 the ideologies which drive many of the groups that we've spoken about this morning is deeply concerning to us. You know, the attacks that took place recently in Edmonton are not the first of their kind, and others have have been you know subjected to to totally unacceptable um, acts of violence, intimidation clearly motivated by by Islamophobia and hatred. It's totally unacceptable. Um, in, in Canada, um, I know it's it's deeply concerning to to uh, the, the Muslim community, but it should be deeply concerning to all of us that that any of us would be subject to to hatred and intimidation and have to live in fear because of their faith, because of because of, of, of who they are and what they look like. And, and you know, I, I, I represent, personally, I represent a very, very substantial um, Muslim community within my riding, and I've met with them. Um, they, they are fearful, and, and no one should have to live in fear in this country. You know, the freedom to live without fear is a, is a freedom that we have to protect. And, and, and so we will take all the actions necessary. Um, I believe that overwhelmingly Canadians 
uh, reject this hatred and want to stand up for our diversity and, and an inclusive society that that is supportive of all people and and you know the the freedom to be who you are to practice your faith um, to 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 and your culture um, is important in this in in this country and and those who are motivated and and we see this is one of the threats of ideologically motivated violent extremism uh, far too often it's it's some individual you know. It, sitting in their basement and a lone wolf radicalized online by some of the hateful material that they're reading um, and absorbing and then going out and acting on. And, you know, that it's one of the reasons we are taking, you know, strong action to list the organizations responsible, even the individual we listed today. We, we know has been responsible for the motivation um, and, and inspiration of, of many sick characters who, who would engage in hateful acts against religious minorities, against women, um, and uh, against the most vulnerable people in our society. And so, you know, it, it, it's also the reason we introduced, for example, earlier this week, uh, we've taken important steps in, in dealing with, with hatred online, and there's more work to do. Let me, let me acknowledge that as well. Um, we, we will be engaging with, with stakeholders, with, with those groups which are being targeted, but also with Canadian civil liberties and privacy interests in this country and with law enforcement. There, we know that there is much more that we must do in order to protect the most vulnerable in our society and to be the society we want to be, which, which is a place where hate is not tolerated. And, and where these actions do not take place. But but the, the threat is real. We've seen evidence of it in Edmonton. We've seen evidence of it in London, Ontario. Um, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunately not new. We, we, you know, acts of anti-Semitism, um, Islamophobia, anti-Asian, anti- uh, M- Muslim and misogynist hatred um, exists in this country, and we have to. We all have a collective responsibility to do everything possible to stand up to it, and to make sure that all Canadians can, can live in peace. And, and it's been said in the past: an injustice against any of us is an injustice against all of us, and we all have a responsibility to to, to stand up for what's right in this country, and 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 to confront and 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 stand against hatred. Great. And I'm already seeing some criticism uh, about um, listing the Aryan Strike Force, which is an organization that has been kind of faltering since at least mid-2020, and not an organization like O9A, the Order of Nine Angels, which has been linked, uh, potentially linked to a murder in, in Toronto of a Muslim man. Um, can you talk a little bit about why um, you chose, or you're listing the entities you're listing and not some of the other hate groups that um, are clearly active in Canada. Yeah, th- th- thanks, Alex. And it's it's an important question, and I understand there are concern. And as I indicated in my earlier remarks, we know that there are others um, who are equally uh, con- concerning to to many. Uh, people in this country. Um, I think it's it's important to understand the listing process. Um, first of all, we, you know, we do we gather intelligence against all of these groups and, and we gather evidence and we measure that evidence and intelligence against a, a very strict legal threshold. Um, the process is is that th- that work among our national security intelligence agencies and law enforcement, and we work also work very much in collaboration with our international partners, um, particularly in the Five Eyes, and 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 most particularly for us with the United States and the United Kingdom. Um, we we do a cross government consultation that identifies all potential ent- entities for addition to the list. Um, a report is is prepared, and assessments completed by the Department of Justice to determine whether or not the threshold is being met to list the entity. And that report then comes to me. And if I feel that I have reasonable and probable grounds to believe that the entity merits listing, I make a recommendation to the to the government council to to do so. And if the the government council is is satisfied, then they're placed on the list. That work is ongoing. Um, as I indicated in February, we had uh, completed the work, uh, met that threshold of, of, of and taking action for me to bring it forward and to form reasonable public grounds and bring it forward to the governing council to list the entities that we did in February. We've continued that work and we're going to continue that work. I, I know, and, and, and frankly, I, I don't believe the evidence indicates that the Aryan Strike Force is 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 does, is not currently a threat. I believe the threat exists and, and remains, and we have met the, now the evidentiary and legal threshold that was necessary to list them. The work on the others is ongoing and will continue. Um, the evidence will continue to gather. It will continue to consult with our allies, and 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 I'll, I will, I'm quite prepared to bring that evidence before, first of all, the Department of Justice, and and then finally before orders and counsel when that evidentiary threshold is met. And and so just let me let me assure those who are concerned with the activities of other 
um, ideologically motivated violent extremist groups in this country that, that we will continue to do the work to use these tools. Um, we are not in any way complacent. And, and as I've said, um, I believe, and the work of the national security intelligence agencies and, and our federal law enforcement agency in this country reflects um, our collective belief that ideologically motivated violent extremist organizations represent the greatest threat to our domestic security in this country. And, and we are very much seized with that threat and taking action in order to counter it. Thank you. Uh, operator, we um, believe we had some technical issue earlier with Mr. McGregor asking his follow-up. So I believe he's back in line and we can maybe end uh, with his follow-up today. Thank you. Mr. McGregor, if you would please press star one on your device keypad, put you in your queue. Once again, Mr. McGregor, please press star one on your device's keypad if you put you in your queue. And I believe Mr. McGregor has disconnected. Okay, that'll end the press conference for today in that case. Thank you everyone for joining. C'est tout le temps que nous avons aujourd'hui pour cette conférence de presse. Merci bien d'être avec nous. Ceci conclut l'événement. Bonne journée à tous.